Ross gets bonus points for asserting himself with Lord Sugar Photo BBC Corinne Mills 2 hours Thursday October 12, 2017 Career coach Corinne Mills casts her appraising eye over the apprentice candidates as week 2 brings a disastrous interior design challenge. Ross an awkward project manager clearly out of his comfort zone telling Jeff he smelt like a numbers person and forgetting to cost in for their time and talent. The resulting multicolored room was less boutique experience, more grubby student dig circa 1982. Yet in the boardroom he had a moment of magnificence, assertively stopping Lord Sugar's bombardment in its tracks. Far from incurring his wrath, I suspect he's won Lord Sugar's grudging respect. More of this please, 7 for managing Lord Sugar Michaela we now know she I a sentient person. But confronted with the girls golf club statement piece, she seemed to have a point. Very down to earth, she says precisely what she thinks, including describing Busra as a bell and astutely lending her negotiation skills to the furniture buying, Michaela is a formidable contender. 5. Sarah Lynn She took a backseat in this task but the skills we saw last week still shone through. The girls' presentation to the hoteliers was deservedly torn to shreds. Sarah stepped in diplomatically to retrieve what she could, saying that they had reserved some budget which could be used to accommodate their feedback. Nice move. 5. Karen Brady looks unimpressed photo BBC on Issa We didn't see much of her this week apart from enjoying a cocktail with Gerald Scarfe as though this is the kind of thing she does every day. She didn't cause any fights or eye-rolling, so that's a plus. 4. Harrison Although he wasnt highly visible in this task, Harrison is a strong presence. He cheekily negotiated a further reduction after they had agreed a price. He won't be a pushover in this competition. For Bushra aiming for a golf-themed Art Deco concept, her bedroom was truly awful, unless perhaps you're a golf fanatic who would enjoy using a handy piece of statement art to vent your rage on the cold walls. She tried to patronize the hoteliers that this was on trend, but they were having none of it. Needs to work on her relationship-building skills. 3. Elizabeth's pottiness may be her downfall photo BBC Charles Last week it felt like Charles was piggy in the Lord of the Flies as his team unanimously rounded on him. This week he seemed to irritate them far less. He described the boy's abomination of a bedroom as class. That doesn't say much for his ascetic judgment, but perhaps he's learning that teamwork can pay off. 3. Elizabeth grabbing the tape measure. Elizabeth was determined to be ruler of the room, but she had mixed fortunes. She successfully managed the budget within an inch of its life, but as keeper of the measurements her pottiness seemed to overwhelm her. Her irritated colleagues seemed to have decided not to spar with her probably because they know she'll sabotage her own chances without any help from them. To Elliot his contribution this week was to insist that a mature cheddar yellow replace the white in the Union Jack-themed room. If Elliot wants to remain, he needs to make a more positive impact. To James, his overconfidence could be problematic. I don't want to be sexist but when we heard painting and decorating we all knew we would get this one. Yet he ends up in the boardroom fighting to stay. If he thought... The task was only about painting and decorated then his listening skills aren't great, nor is his judgment about his and other people's capabilities. In addition, his cost miscalculations will ring alarm bells for Lord Sugar, too Claude looks on with interest photo BBC Jade the Graphene Queen showed some spiky edges this week as she locked swords with Brand Princess Joanna. Jade's insults had a disconcerting viciousness to them. She will need to watch her emotional controls if she is to prove she has the resilience needed to run Lord Sugar's new business. 1. Joanna Joanna's personal brand seemed to be slightly compromised this week. The spat with Jade left her slightly tearful, which didnt quite reinforce the cool, confident power woman message she likes to convey. Neither did asking Busra if there is such a thing as a tree with fur she is going to need to reclaim some ground. 2. Sajin in this task he saw himself as a creative guru. I give them the fruits it's now up to them to make the juice. However, his ideas are largely superficial nonsense. His mood board was less Kelly Hoppin and more toddler collage project. However, he is quite endearing with his warm approach and relaxed manner. If we can see some substance, he might stand a chance. To Sarah Jane she seemed tight-lipped and unhappy throughout the project. Admittedly she did have a tricky team to deal with, which included Elizabeth and Siobhan, but the overall impression of her was one of joylessness. To end of the road for Jeff Photo BBC Siobhan no accusations of faffling this week. Instead, she seemed quite pleased that other people were also finding Elizabeth infuriating.
Maybe she has also learned that if she doesn't get embroiled in personality clashes, she's less likely to be dragged into the boardroom. To Andrew the Clark Kent lookalike seemed curiously absent this week apart from praising the high standard of his bedroom painting. Is he secretly flying off to tackle the Lex Luthers of this world? To Jeff like your school friend's attention-seeking kid brother. Desperate to hang out with the big kids. Saying stupid stuff just to get a reaction. Cute only in small doses. Jeff wanted to shine as a creative person as well as a business leader. He succeeded as neither, but he will be happy he showed us his breakdancing. Zero Corinne Mills is a career coach with www.personalcareermanagement.com The Apprentice Candidates Reviewed by a Career Coach Week 119 of the Most Outrageous Apprentice Quotes of All Time in News HTTP Sinus.co.uk